What is going on everyone? Platinum Beast coming at you with yet another video. Today we're going to talk about what are the Platinum Group medals and why do they matter. This is an article I found on thermofisher.com. I will be linking this article in the description down below. But this is a very interesting topic that I wanted to cover because there's more to Platinum than just Platinum. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so I've got the article pulled up here. Like I said, I will be linking this in the description down below in case you want to check it out for yourself. There is an editor's note here that this is part one of a six part series on platinum group metals. I suppose that will run on Tuesdays. This article is fairly old, so I presume all six parts are out. This article was written January of 2015, but this isn't a news article, so to speak. This is more just an article talking about the different metals that consist within the platinum group metal spectrum. So we all know about platinum, palladium, and rhodium, and those are the first three metals listed here with descriptions, and I'm going to read through the descriptions, but we all know about these three metals. Why? Because they are minted in bullion form. But there are more platinum group metals than just these three, right? These three are the investment type, the rest are simply industrial. They have no investments ability whatsoever other than investing in mining companies and things of that nature. And so, yeah. But let's go ahead and get into this article. So basically, the platinum group metals are a family of six structurally and chemically similar elements that are most valued for their wide range of industrial, medical, and electronic applications. These versatile metals play a significant role in many of the products we use every day. So, the first metal on the list is platinum. Platinum is probably the most recognized platinum group metals. Yes, we know this to be true because of its use in jewelry, but its main application is the manufacture of catalytic converters as well as other industrial applications. We know this as well. Platinum has a high melting point and temperature stability is highly corrosion oxidation resistant and is a good oxidation catalyst platinum is biologically compatible and has many significant applications in medicine keyword medicine so a lot of guys like to focus in on the cars aspect and the catalytic converters and filtering emissions but there are medical aspects to platinum as well and it is a vital metal used in the medical industry and you know medical stuff we know generally has no limit as to how much money they will spend, especially life-saving treatment. Down here we get into palladium. It says palladium is also used to make jewelry, although it's not as popular as platinum. We know this to be true as well. Platinum's unique quality is its ability to absorb hydrogen, which has applications in chemical processes that require hydrogen exchange between two reactants such as that which produces the raw materials for synthetic rubber and nylon. Palladium is chemically stable and like platinum has excellent catalytic properties. So it can be used as a substitute for the more expensive platinum and catalytic converters. Okay, so we know that palladium is way more expensive than platinum. So this article is sort of showing its age with that statement. But it is interesting that it it's very similar to platinum. So they're interchangeable and we know this to be true as well. And that's why a lot of auto manufacturers switch over to palladium in regular unleaded fuel vehicles. Down here, we get into rhodium. It says rhodium, another highly active catalyst is widely used in vehicle emission control systems. Rhodium is also used to make glass thanks to its high melting point and temperature stability. So that's an interesting point used to make glass. Hmm. I didn't know that about rhodium, but we all know rhodium is third on the spectrum of investment metals. Not many people stack rhodium. Not many people have rhodium in their stack. It's a fairly new metal in the investment world. Until recently, it wasn't available for investment purposes at all. So that is interesting indeed. We also know that the price of rhodium has skyrocketed to astronomical levels. It's pretty ridiculous to see. We know this, and we know the reason for this is because it is traded strictly over the counter, 
There is no paper market for rhodium. So we're going to go ahead and get into the other three metals that you may not have heard of or you may have heard of but don't know, quite know very much about. And the first on the list is iridium. Iridium is the rarest and most common or corrosion, excuse me, resistant of the platinum group metals. Interesting. It is very dense and has a high chemical and thermal stability like platinum. Iridium is biologically compatible and has many medical applications. So again, another platinum group metal that has medical applications is very close in relation to platinum. And interestingly enough, it is the most corrosion resistant of the platinum group metals. So if you are you need an app or you are in an application industrially that needs the least corrosion metal available you're going to want iridium for that you want if if corrosion is not an option for your industrial application you're going to want to use iridium because it is the most corrosion resistant of the platinum group metals so that's an interesting point very similar with some key differences but overall interesting the next metal we're going to get into is ruthenium ruthenium although brittle ruthenium is very hard and is a good alloying agent for platinum and palladium. Like other platinum group metals, it has a high melting point and superior catalytic properties. Ruthenium is used in the electrical and electrochemical industries for its conductive properties and durabilities. Hmm, conductive properties and durabilities. Interesting. So something I didn't think about until just now, what if platinum group metals, what if some of these metals are starting to be used in more electrical applications, right? People talk about electric cars taking over and making platinum worthless. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. However, it would be interesting to see if ruthenium becomes a investable or investor demand rises enough to make ruthenium a metal that is minted in bullion form for investment purposes. That is interesting. It would be interesting to see iridium or ruthenium be used in investment forms and have the ability to purchase it uh, in physical asset form. However, that's not really the case at the current state. I want to note that these extra platinum group metals can be purchased in certain forms physically, but they're not specifically minted for investment purposes. And so we are moving on to the last of the platinum group metals, which is osmium. Osmium and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. As the densest and hardest of the group, osmium is the often alloyed with other platinum group metals such as platinum and iridium. Osmium also is an excellent conductor of electricity and effective oxidation catalyst. Common applications for osmium include fuel cells and forensic science. So another interesting metal in the platinum group metals, and it's interesting that it's the densest of the metals. So uh, imagine what a coin, a one ounce coin of osmium would actually be like. It would probably be pretty small. If you've ever had the chance to hold an ounce of platinum in raw form, which I have, you realize instantly how amazing it is to feel the density. It feels so heavy and yet it's so small. It almost tricks your mind. Your mind is so used to holding an ounce of silver or gold that once you get your hands on an ounce of platinum, you're like, wow, this is this is crazy how much you can feel the weight and yet how small it is in your hand. Osmium, I presume, would make that experience even greater. But down here at the bottom, it lists a few extra topics and points and things like that. These are just a few of the myriad applications for platinum group metals. Future posts will offer more details about some of the important ways in which platinum group metals influence our lives. For example, did you know a radioactive isotope of palladium is being tested for the treatment of breast and prostate cancers? Wow. Now that's a very interesting uh, point that they made in this article. Breast cancer and prostate cancer are two cancers that are very widely spread. They have a lot of people they have impacted. They've impacted a lot of lives and they have movements behind both of them really. Uh, because of the impact they've had. So if palladium has the ability to help with the treatment in those cancers, that could really up the value. And perhaps that could be why the value has gone up a little bit. Of course, them switching the cars to palladium has definitely influenced the price, but this could as well. 
Platinum and iridium are used in oral and retinal implants. Interesting, another medical use. See, guys? Platinum is used for more than just cars. It's used for oral and retinal implants. So retinal is has to do with the eyes, I presume. Oral, I'm not exactly sure what that word <laughs> means, um, unfortunately, but I presume it's pretty important. And it platinum, if platinum is used to help in those medical treatments or uh, procedures, I'm all for it. In addition to catalytic converters, other automotive applications call for platinum, including oxygen sensors and spark plugs. That's another interesting point. Uh, platinum is not just used in catalytic converters. Palladium is used virtually in virtually all electronics. That's an interesting point. I hadn't, I did not know that. So that's interesting. Palladium is used in electronics as well as automotive industry and other industries. So that's some interesting stuff too. I hadn't heard of any of the platinum group metals really being used in electronics, but I suppose palladium is. Iridium is used to make high purity crystals, which have applications in the medical petroleum and security industries. Another interesting point. So down here, it kind of gives an overview. Based, because there are so many uses, the platinum group metals are in high demand. And mining alone doesn't produce enough supply. According to the U.S. Geological Survey in 2011, recycled platinum, palladium, and rhodium obtained from jewelry, electronic equipment, and catalytic converters provided a significant proportion of total world supply as much as 24% of the total platinum and palladium supply and about 27% of total rhodium supply. An estimated 155 kilogram, thousand kilograms of platinum group metals was recovered globally from new and old scrap in 2013, including about 56,000 kilograms of platinum group metals in North America. Pyrometa Lurgical processes are favored for the recycling of platinum group metals, bearing materials such as catalytic converters because of the high recovery rates. Primary platinum group metals must be separated from base metals and impurities. Wavelength dispersive X-ray fluorescence technology is well established for the analysis of recovered metals. In either scenario, because it offers high sensitivity down to low atomic number elements, high risk repeatability and element selectivity wdxrf is also favored for its wide dynamic range and ability to achieve performance levels needed for routine industrial applications so what is the whole point of this article trying to get across there's much more to the platinum group metals than just cars there are many different industrial uses for these metals also these metals are extremely unique on many different levels and because of their uniqueness, I see many future potential industrial uses only helping the overall value of platinum over time, as well as the other platinum group metals. But this is a very interesting article, guys. And I definitely wanted to share this and cover this topic on my channel. But with all that being said, guys, that wraps up today's article and today's information I'm sharing with you all. I will be linking again this article in the description down below. But let me know your thoughts on all of this. This is some interesting stuff for sure. There are six different platinum group metals, and who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to buy all six of them on the investment market as far as physical bullion is concerned. But with all that being said, guys, I appreciate all of you. Be sure to hit your like button on the way out. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with future videos on my channel. Be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. And with all that being said, until next time, we will see you.